Stadia's Star Lab is the applied research and development group, so we're mostly working on uh, new gameplay features that are made possible by Stadia's unique qualities. We have people who come to us who are just, they want to know what we think the future is going to be like. And at Star Lab, we have this incredible privilege to be like on the Google campus and so close to all these people that are working on these major parts of the future of the internet. A lot of what we provide are samples of technology, and so prototypes and things where developers can look at it and see, you know, we talk about this stuff in the abstract, but here's how it really works, and here's how you can drop it into a game, here's how you can play with it. It's about elasticity, it's about being able to get whatever resources you want whenever you want them, and it just turns game development upside down in the far future. If you are playing Red Dead Redemption, and kind of like think about how many millions of consoles are playing Red Dead Redemption. Every single one of them is rendering the same rock that however many millions of times. In the cloud, it's possible you could render that rock once. And so that's the kind of transformation that gets towards persistent worlds, which you can only do with this kind of technology and with the cloud distribution. Only the feeblest of men take jobs in the government. <laughs> so every game developer has had to cut something because of the space of the box that they're trying to get the game onto. And Stadia is about not having that box, right? It's about not having a fixed shape in which you have to fit your game. But it's like, if I have a game that maybe is lighter on the rendering, but I really need this huge amount of CPU in order to do artificial intelligence or, or make my characters more believable, it's about being able to give them that option to have more space. And I, another game might use the space a totally different way. And we create kind of a proof of concept that is a game prototype that you can experience, and we say, Along the way, what do we need to do? What problems do we need to solve in order to make that possible? And so at the end of that, we have kind of this artifact that developers could potentially like look at and build upon. But really what we do is it's that whole journey along the way of like all this stuff we didn't even know would be a problem. It turns out that, that if you try to solve too many problems at the same time, like every developer knows that that's how you get just a train wreck of a project. So it's about really like being smart about taking what risks you want to take. And I think in that way, um, every advance in technology that's come to the game industry has challenged us to think in a new way, and this is kind of another step in that direction. So uh, Style Transfer is a machine learning technology that works on the video frame of the game. So when the game renders out a frame, Style Transfer is using machine learning to alter that and, and turn it into a new art style. I think that um, it's so stunningly beautiful and shocking, and people were very shocked when they saw it. Internally in the machine learning community, people told us that shouldn't be possible. And so it was like, that, that's like where we really get excited is like when people tell us something's not possible and we could say, oh yeah, we think it is. Or maybe we don't know, but we're gonna try. And uh, I think it's easy to get caught up on like the visual effect of style transfer, and we talked about it as a prototyping technology, but it's so fundamental that I think we haven't yet even gotten to where we can experiment with what it means for game design. When I look at it, I think, oh my gosh, wait a minute, what if you could go up to an object and it's like a painting and you can touch it and all of a sudden the game changes the style and you've got all these paintings in the game. And what if when you change the style that the game is in, all of a sudden you see a door that you couldn't see because of the way that the style was hiding that in the previous style that you were experiencing. That's the kind of thing where we take a technology that's like, it's, it's about the image layer processing, right? It's about art styles, which does have a whole bunch of like development implications. But when we really point that at what does it mean for player experience and game design, that's what I think gets really exciting.